Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is my second video. I am going to go over my Kino Larber sale pickups, my Warner Archive sale pickups, and a couple new releases that came out this past Tuesday. And I also went to the local thrift store and I found two titles that I will go over with you before I start everything else. Uh, first pickup I got at the thrift store was The Martian on Blu-ray. Uh, there is no digital, someone took it out, but the disc was mint, so I picked it up for a couple of dollars. I haven't seen it, but I keep hearing great reviews about this film. Uh, it stars Matt Damon uh, from 2015, and I know it has to do with a mission to Mars, and he gets... Uh, he's presumed dead and left behind by his crew and he must find a way to contact Earth for them to save him before he dies or whatever. So I, I heard it was good, so I picked it up. Uh, and the second and the last title that I found was a Warner Archive release of a film from 1963 starring Jackie Gleason and Steve McQueen. Uh, directed by Ralph Nelson. It is uh, Soldier in the Rain. Uh, it is black and white and it was written by Blake Edwards who was in uh, I believe he wrote the original Pink Panther film and the series uh, Yep, there's, there's the back I know I had to grab it when I saw that blue uh, spine so uh, it is an on-demand disc, but the artwork's pretty pretty cool too. Okay, next pickup I got at I believe Walmart. Uh, I know a lot of people enjoyed this film. I have not seen it yet, but it stars Rain Wilson, Jack Dylan, Gracer, Mina Savari, and Fionn Whitehead. That is Don't Tell a Soul. This is put out by Lionsgate. Uh, 2021 96 minutes now I hear this is a really uh, suspenseful thriller it says some secrets should stay buried uh, basically uh, the two kids are stealing money to help save their sick mother played by Mina Savari and they are surprised by the local security officer uh, played by Rain Wilson so I guess they go on like a chase and then apparently the security guard falls into a hole. And uh, over the next few days, one of the kids and the security guard force an uneasy relationship. Uh, the security guard tells the kid that he'll keep quiet if, if he sets him free. But apparently he has a uh, secret that will threaten the life of uh, the kid and his family, so I can't wait to give that a watch. Alright guys, next up is a, is a film that everyone seems to be enjoying. I know I got certified fresh Rotten Tomatoes, but that doesn't really mean much to me personally because I've seen films that are just awful and they get great ratings. I don't understand it. But I, I, I do, I do uh, people say this is a really, really good movie. It's a thriller. It just got released on Tuesday, and that is Promising Young Woman. Um, I, I guess she, uh, Cassie, played by Carrie Mulligan, uh, is always getting crap from her family about uh, finding a man. And she doesn't really date, but apparently she does it, goes out at night at bars pretending to be drunk and I guess uh, trying to I guess find men that I don't know exactly what it's totally about uh, but uh, yeah I can't wait to give that one a watch uh, next up and the last pickup from Best Buy that I found was the Rad Steel book I know I passed on the Vinegar Syndrome release. I don't know why I did. 
I guess I wasn't really interested, but I had to I had to pick this up because it was cool artwork. I know the slipcover comes off with the, the font and it has really cool like colors and stuff, but it's still sealed, so can't wait to check this one out. I know it stars uh Lori Laughlin, uh Jack Weston, Bart Connor, Bill Allen, Talia Shire, and Ray Waltson. So yeah, can't wait to look that up. This is from 1986 and it is 93 minutes and it has a bunch of bonus features on here. It has a Q and A with cast members, screenwriter, and hosted by uh, Jorma Tacone. Don't know who that is. Uh, we got archival video interviews with the cast and the crew and the original behind the scenes featurette and a music video. Uh, yes, uh, so I got this one in the mail, or not mail, the Amazon dropped this off this morning. Um, I was a little uh, upset about the, the slip cover because it's a little beat up on the back. And I was really looking forward to watching this film, still am, it is Psycho Gorman. Now I hear this is a kids movie, I guess, but it has a lot of blood and gore. It's a Shudder original put out by RLJE. From 2020, it is 94 minutes, and it has a director commentary, interviews with the cast and crew, a fight choreography, the music of the film, behind the scenes featurettes, an art gallery, uh, there's trading cards inside, or uh, no, sorry, trading card gallery, uh, behind the scenes photo gallery, and more, whatever that means. But I can't wait to, look, to check this one out. This is about two kids uh, resur uh, unwillingly, unwittingly resurrect an ancient alien overlord who was entombed on Earth millions of years ago after a failed attempt to destroy the universe. They nickname the evil creature Psycho Gorman, or PG for short, and use the magical amulet they discovered to force him to obey their childish whims. So I can't wait to check that one out. Okay, next up we have my Kino Lorber pickups, which I only got five titles. I didn't want to go too crazy because I know the Warner Archive one was coming soon. And I picked up seven from, from Warner Archive. First title that I got, um, I had a friend of mine who watched it and she really enjoyed it. And I'm also a fan of black and white films. Uh, this is from 1946. And it's 83 minutes and it is The Spiral Staircase. Starring Dorothy McGuire, George Brent, and Ethel Barrymore. Directed by Robert S uh, Siodmak. Siodmak? how to pronounce that uh this looks like uh kind of like a haunted house film i perceive i don't know um a murderer is targeting disabled women in a young new england town and helen a mute servant of in a gothic mansion is terrified she's next uh, Mrs. Warren, the invalid, bullying mistress of the house, warns her to leave at once rather than rely on her weak son and stepson for protection. But even as Helen is packing her things, she suspects she may be too late and the murder is closer than she ever imagined. So, can't wait to give that one a watch. Next up is a David Lynch film from 1997. I believe I have the DVD of this so I wanted to upgrade for the and it was a good price we have Lost Highway uh, starring Bill Pullman Patricia Arquette uh, Gary Busey Robert Loggia and uh, Balthaz Balthazar Getty I guess I'm saying that right um, I remember this has a really good soundtrack I, I got the soundtrack before I actually saw the film when I was what what Joe says a young lad 
Yeah, I believe I was like 12 when this movie came out. Uh, yeah, so I can't wait to watch that. I always enjoy David Lynch's films. Uh, up next, we have a thriller horror from 1976 uh, put out by Scorpion Releasing. Um, I have not seen this film before, uh, and I don't totally recognize anybody in it, but I've always enjoyed the cover. It's this dog's... Uh, I guess when you think of killer dogs, you think of Cujo, and yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, this is about on a quiet, quiet campus of the remotely located Southwestern University. Something strange is happening. All the dogs in the area, once loyal or gentle pets, are now banding together in wild packs and hunting down their former masters. Could the strange transformation have anything to do with the secret government experiences being conducted in the school's physics laboratory? <sighs> that looks interesting. I, I do enjoy killer, killer animal movies. Uh, up next is a upgrade. Um, I watched this movie at least three, two or three times since I had the DVD. Uh, this is from 1974, and it stars Leif Garrett, and uh, I, don't reckon, I don't really remember anybody else in this film. Sorrel Book and Gene Evans, and that is Devil Times Five, a.k.a. Horrible House on the Hill. Uh, this is a really good, creepy, like, killer kid movie. Uh, five children crawl from the wreckage of a deadly van accident in a snowy canyon. The juvenile survivors seek shelter at a secluded mountaintop winter home occupied by a rich businessman and his friends. Soon strange mishaps occur and the group is stranded without electricity and telephones. One by one, the adults begin to fall prey on a series of shocking and violent deaths. By the time the few surviving adults suspect the demented delinquents, it may be too late. Uh, this is a really good film, by the way. I really enjoyed it, so I'm glad I upgraded. Uh, it actually, yes, Sorrel Book is the uh, is Boss Hog from the original Dukes of Hazzard TV show, so that's pretty cool. The last title from Kino Lorber is a Code Red Shout Factory and Worcester Films release. Uh, this is, it looks like it's a creature feature, sort of alien film. And this is called Slithus. Uh, this is from 1977. Uh, stars Alan Blanchard, Judy Matulski, Melo Alexandria, Dennis Lee F Fultz, and Wynn Condict. Uh, this is about... Uh, from the pollution of our nuclear waste came the killer we cannot destroy. Our worst nightmares come to life with a terrifying scaly monster, Slithus. First, this nuclear mutant killed household pets near the canals of Venice, California. Now it preys on old couples and a homeless rotent man sleeping in the public's men's room. Public men's, I guess, men's restroom. In the tradition of Jaws, two outcasts, the teacher and a Jamaican sea hunter will take on the horrific monster to stop the slaughter. Uh, this mud monster creature is something out of the 50s classics we love. Oh, that looks pretty cool. So this. Okay, my last pickup, I'm gonna go over my Warner archives. Uh, I have seven titles here, and they all have to do with creatures. Uh, I believe most of these are from the 60s and 70s. 
Uh, the first one here, most of these are upgrades, by the way. I, I, I have DVDs, these are all Blu rays. Um, first up is a film about a killer uh, tree trunk, I believe is what it is. Yeah, it's a part, part man, part tree. Uh, it is from Hell It Came. Uh, let's see here. The killer tree man, his name is Tabonga. It says, on a remote South Seas island, no one is safe from this hideous and unique monster. He is part man, part tree, all doom. Formerly an island prince, he was unjustly put to death by a witch doctor. Now he's returned to life with roots, branches, and a vengeance. Against natives, against visiting American scientists who investigate the tree's radioactive green sap. Against anyone unwise enough to expect a tree to stay put. A macabre medley of creature feature, Polynesian kitsch, and atomic age cautionary tale. So anyone like killer trees, you should give it a watch. Uh, this is another upgrade. I just watched this the other day. It is so cheesy, but so fun. Uh, this is The Green Slime. Uh, this is from 1960, where's the date here? 68. This is a Japanese film with all American actors. Uh, it's cheesy. We got aliens. We got green slime, obviously. Uh, basically, um, uh, these these people are going on a, on a mission to a huge asteroid. Uh, the crew returns to find its space station, unaware that a bit of ooze from the asteroid clings to a crewman's uniform, and it just uh, grows into a murderous tentacle monsters. They take over the. And they take over the space station and basically they have to destroy, somehow find a way to destroy the alien creatures and get home safely. So that's, that's a fun, cheesy little creature feature. Up next is from 1957. It's another one of those creature features. Uh, this is the Black Scorpion. Uh, they came from below to create hell on Earth. They're big, they're bad. They scuttle along in caverns miles beneath the Earth until an earthquake opens path, paths to the surface. Now these monsters of, of Genus Arachnida are invading our world with deadly force. Uh, this was, the special effects here were co-designed by Willis O'Brien, who had, who did the special effects for the, uh, the original King Kong. Uh, this is a horror with a sting more lethal than the king-sized ants that overran Los Angeles sewers in the classic Them, which I have the DVD of. Uh, can humankind survive these incredible, jug invincible juggernauts? So yeah, I can't wait to check that one out. I got four more titles here. Uh, this is not a. This is a first-time pickup for me. This is from 1969. This is a Hammer film, which I didn't, I didn't know there was until now. Uh, this is When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth. This is... Uh, this is after Ra Raquel Welsh uh, conquered the screen in one million years BC. Uh, Hammer Studios followed up with When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth, written and directed by Val Guest, who did a uh, quarter mass experiment. And based on a story by uh, J.G. Ballard, uh, Victoria Vitri stars as Santa, rescued from ritual sacrifice by Terra. 
played by Robin Haydon, a member of the rival rival tribe. Uh, her survival coincides with the mysterious formation of a new fire in the sky, the moon. Uh, Santa's old tribe blames her for the affront to the sun. Santa flees their wrath and Terra follows. They share adventures loom as large as the large as the giants who once ruled the earth. Uh, this is 100 minutes long, and it's it looks pretty cool. It's a little little dinosaurs. Up next, we have a black and white film from 1956. It's only 66 minutes long. This is an upgrade. I do have the DVD. This is the Cyclops, uh, starring James Craig. Produced, written, and directed by Burt Gordon. Uh, lovely Susan Winter organizes an expedition deep into the wild, wilds of Mexico. She hopes to find her aviator fiancé lost in his plane crash. Instead, uh, she and her three male companions find behemoth bugs, giant battling lizards, mountains practically glowing with uranium, and a 25-foot tall human beast with a single eye, a melted cheese sandwich face, and a very scary attitude. So this is definitely screams 50s uh, cheese horror. So I can't wait to give that one a watch. All right, two more titles here. Uh, we'll go with the upgrade first. Uh, this is very common. This is a very um, common title that people seem to enjoy and it was remade by uh, John Carpenter in the 1980s and this is The Thing from Another World this is a Howard Hawks production directed by Christian Nyby uh, starring Margaret Sheridan, Kenneth Toby and James Arness uh, I don't have to, really have to go over this with you guys. You pretty much know the synopsis. Uh, Arctic researchers discover a huge frozen space space sling inside a crash landed UFO. Then fight for their lives after the murderous being emerges from icy captivity. So basically, it's the same same story as the uh, Carpenter uh, remake. This is black and white. Okay, guys, and the last title here is another creature feature from 1958. It's 80 minutes long, black and white, and this takes place in London. It is the giant behemoth, uh, directed by Eugene Laurie. It compares it to his classic film, The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Uh, The alarming levels of radiation have infused the water, plants, and skies, and a radiated paleosaurus rises from the ocean depths. So I guess that's kind of like um, Godzilla in a way. Uh, it takes place in uh, London, not uh, Japan, so it's probably like the same kind of type of deal though. Uh, we get commentary by the special effects, the special effects creators, and you get the theatrical trailer. Wouldn't want to mess with that guy. Okay, guys, that's it for this uh, short video today. Um, probably drop another one sometime next week if I am out and about and I find anything, or if I decide just to shoot like a. Uh, a random video from some of my collection, but I will figure that out sometime in the next couple of days. So stay safe out there, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.